Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. Got a little job here suitable for the boring mill today. Got this uh, John Deere 760A scraper transmission here that's a PTO brake, which in this case is the elevating chain. Uh, runs the elevator on the, this is a paddle scraper. Uh, enough time somebody threw the brake on while it was elevating and they sheared the pin off and started spinning this brake in the housing in here. And, uh, it's a little chewed oversized and thus it doesn't, uh, it leaks oil, doesn't hold pressure like it should so the brake doesn't hold. And then this uh, one's cocking the bore too some because it's not true anymore. So uh, the job for this is to go down in here where we're working is about right here. It's a blind hole, so it can't go all the way through. It's got to go in from this end. Uh, there's two additional bearing pockets also that this has to go through that lines up with those. Uh, and it's all got to be in line. So uh, I'm going to make, make an assumption here on this that uh, the bores are parallel to the surface of this transmission case. Uh, from what I found before, full of this kind of stuff, that is a valid assumption. That's the way they machine it. So I think I'm safe going with that. Should be square. I can only indicate the first bore. Uh, I don't really have a good way to indicate the second bore in there from this end because it's 12 inches uh, past where my chuck can even go in at and I can't see anything in there. So if I had an indicator up in it, I couldn't really see it because it's cast walled down to here. So there's not, uh, not a lot of visibility there to tell. But uh, I'll just take a real small cut and if it looks like it's cutting even, then I'll know that that was indeed the case and it's all parallel to the top surface and I'll be good to go. If it's not, then we'll have to back up and punt and figure out some way to determine what that alignment is. Uh, this was the best tooling setup I could come up with for doing this. Uh, this just barely gives me enough length to get to the bottom of that bore to recut it with this tool. Uh, like I said, it's got to go through bearing pockets. The four inch spindle can't pass through them if they're too small. So, but this here will go through and it just, like I said, just barely gives me enough to get down in there. So this is what I'll be using. Is this uh, inch and a half bar with a high speed steel ground cutter. And uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm lined up. Got my stop blocks on the table. Pulled up against it to get it square. Got the uh, hold downs there and hold down up here on the front side. And I can't seem to move it, so I think it'll be rigid enough for doing this cutting on it. Should be safe to not walk off. So let me try and get an indicator and I'll sweep this outer bore and if it looks like I'm lined up good, then I'll put this in and we'll see if I can get any film in here showing what, what I'm doing. I'll bring you around and you can take a look. It's cramped quarters, so you may not be able to see me cutting this. You can see there's lots of boring mill work in here that's been done. This one up here. That's the problem, child. All the way back in the back where that hole is that's where the hydraulic oil comes out and pushes on the piston and that bore is a little little uh, turfed up there uh, doesn't look aligned in this picture but I can't get the camera up there to line up on it so maybe it's something like this anyway that's where we got to work way back in there and it is a blind hole so and so you can see we've got uh, two cast walls in here dividing this thing off. So with it down on the table, 
I uh, can't really see up in there. Customer will have to clean all this metal chips and stuff out of here when I'm done with it. I'll have to pull the rest of these bearings out and flush it all. Or that's what I do anyway. Well, I've got it bored out, cleaned up in there. Took a little more than I thought it would to get it, so uh, just uh, under two and an eighth, so about a thou underneath. So what I want to do is turn a bushing that's two and an eighth OD and maybe a little uh, less than the two inch nominal inside diameter and I'll get it stuck in there and then I'll go back and rebore it to size and location and that way it's nice and true and any crush that I get out of it uh, putting it in there I can correct and get it uh, like it needs to be so. I'm going to go find a piece of material and we'll see if I can't get it stuck in there. Well, the machine is going to have to wait a little bit. We got some problems out here. Yeah, probably finish the machine in a little bit. Okay, so I've got my bushing made here, uh, which is not quite a finished size. It uh, doesn't go down on there yet. Uh, when you get something real thin like this, it's a little problematic because the chuck will distort it uh, when it clamps down. So I want to get this pressed into the bore and I'm going to use the spindle on there, the actual end of the boring bar. We'll take this bushing and put it on there and shove this thing up in the hole. So. That, can't see nothing. Anyway, I'm going to put this in and take a look. Okay, so I've got the second bushing made and fitted. Finished it on size on the lathe this time so that uh, I don't have to finish it up in that blind bore. I'm not that good with this machine yet to get a real nice finish on that. Uh, that's what screwed up the first one. I had grooves in it. It was rough to the touch and I didn't like that, so cut it back out and do it again. So get some very entertaining compound. Let me get some bearing retaining compound on the outside of this and jam it in here. Well, we got it bushed up. I'm satisfied that the fit is good. I'm right on the, the uh, 5,000 clearance that it's supposed to have. So this job ought to be fixed. Ready to go another 10,000 hours or whatever it's got on it. And there it is with the brake installed down in there. So it goes right on the pin just like it's supposed to. And it moves freely. That way it doesn't uh, hang up and drag the brake. You want it, it needs to be able to release. There's no spring or anything that pushes it back. It kind of just like the O-ring groove is extra long to let it float so that it, it'll roll back and release and then the O-ring pushes it back up with the hydraulic pressure. So, I'm going to call this job done. Well, that's the first bigger job completed on the GNL. Uh, could have gone better, could have not had to do it over, but uh, it's turned out all right now. Uh, practice makes perfect. Still got to get uh, more used to running this machine and the tooling on it and getting the tooling uh, tuned up for it. Uh, I need to get a bunch of... Uh, half inch high speed steel blanks that I can grind out and make the uh, cutters with. As most of these ones just come with this tooling's all shot and I've had to re-grind it and touch it up to get it to work. But uh, it's working okay. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later.